The state of Maryland is heading toward a financial cliff, and according to a new report, education spending is a main driver. But as Project Baltimore's Chris Papps explains, some say there is a simple solution. For many, including State Senator Justin Reedy, but it's a self-created hole. The news was not shocking. I'm disappointed, but not surprised that, that, the, that we were downgraded to negative. Years ago, Reedy, who represents Carroll and Frederick counties, tried to warn lawmakers in Annapolis that education spending was sending Maryland towards a financial cliff. We have a very high tax state and, and local governments, and so we were concerned. We, we saw this as being an unsustainable uh, an unsustainable increase. Now, Moody's has issued its own warning for the state's fiscal future, recently downgrading Maryland's financial outlook to negative from stable. The credit rating agency affirmed Maryland's coveted AAA bond rating, but added the negative outlook incorporates difficulties Maryland will face to achieve balanced financial operations in coming years. And according to that report, one of the main drivers of the financial difficulty is funding the blueprint for Maryland's future. Education spending was always increasing. This is just putting a rocket ship on it without the kind of accountability that's needed, by the way, in my view. But we could change that. We, we could adjust that. There being 95 votes in the affirmative. The veto is overridden. In 2021, lawmakers overrode then-Governor Larry Hogan's veto and passed a blueprint for Maryland's future, also called the Kerwin Plan. The law pumps $30 billion additional tax dollars into public education statewide over the first 10 years, and then $4 billion additional dollars every year after that. The plan, in part, increases teacher salaries, expands pre-K, and bolsters career and technology training. But when the bill was passed, the legislature did not pass a funding mechanism. In other words, Annapolis approved the largest education spending increase in state history without a way to pay for it. And it didn't take long before local jurisdictions expressed significant concerns over how to pay for the blueprint. Now, many districts have been forced to consider budget cuts, like eliminating teachers and programs to afford other costs mandated by the blueprint. They're gonna to be tough moments. During this year's legislative session in Annapolis, State Senate President Bill Ferguson acknowledged concerns from local jurisdiction over education spending and potential tax increases. But lawmakers chose not to revisit the blueprint's funding formula. But I think in the end, the right increased investment with the right accountability will make the difference to make a better school system across the state. Following this Moody's report, critics of the blueprint. Yes. Like Senator Reedy are now hopeful the legislature will address the funding formulas during next year's session. Reedy says the blueprint can be fully funded if it's implemented over 14 years instead of the current 10 years. House and Senate Republicans, according to Reedy, are finalizing the budgetary numbers which they hope to release soon. We can shift the mandates and spending, still increase spending on an investment in education, but just slow the process down a little bit so that we it's more sustainable. According to state projections, by next year, Maryland's expected budget deficit will grow to $1 billion. Two years after that, the budget deficit is expected to hit $1.3 billion, and then more than double to $3 billion in fiscal year 2028. And these deficits are largely due to increased spending mandated by the blueprint. In a recent op-ed in the Baltimore Sun, State Senator Stephen Hershey pointed to budget statistics from the Larry Hogan administration that said the 10-year cost associated with the blueprint is so great that in order to pay for it, the state would have to either increase the personal income tax by 39% or raise the sales tax by 89% or increase property taxes by 535 percent. I think it's it's alarming if you don't change course. And my message uh, and the message of, uh, frankly, our Republican legislators in the House and Senate is you actually don't have to raise taxes to fix this issue. You don't have to raise taxes and you also don't need draconian massive cuts. You just need to slow down the rate of growth and we can we can address a lot of our outstanding budget issues. I'm Chris Pabst and this is Project Baltimore. 
I'm Mary Bubala. Thank you for watching. Here's another video for you to watch. Also take some time to subscribe to our YouTube channel.